No time to waste. We got ourselves the first match right here in the bottom right side. We got a blue Protoss fighting for the Alpha X. He is, of course, the Taiwanese player. He is nice. Maybe the underdog of this one right here, but he has been able to make upsets happen before. Don't underestimate him. And here's the man that may underestimate him. He's the Red Zerg. He's a Korean player. He's incredibly powerful. It's been, um, it's been in a, well, I don't want to say slump necessarily because, you know, it is still who he is, but he hasn't been able to win the, as many tournaments as he would like to, obviously, right? He's famous for saying, I want to be the name everybody has in their mouth as soon as they start, say StarCraft 2. My name should follow. His name is Dragon Phoenix Gaming's Dark. Alright, Dark has been going into a couple more online tournaments, a little, little bit uh, more active in the online scene with the events and such. It's nice to see for us, of course, because that means we just get to enjoy his gameplay all that much more. But at the same time, you know, it does come probably from a place where he's just disappointed with his performances in the bigger tournaments where... Maybe it uh, could be as well about just not being able to really get the prize pools that he would like to get from those places. Or maybe just feeling like, you know what, let me just play it safe. Try to gain some extra dough from these uh, tournaments right here. Get some extra practice in as well. Start prepping and uh, building myself up again. This is going back into the gym pretty much, right? Trying to hit the iron. Trying to see what he will be able to get done. In a setting like this. It's a bit of a different one, of course, when you are just sitting comfortably at your own desk. Just sitting at home. Relaxing, playing some StarCraft 2 that way. It's how all your practice goes, so... I highly doubt that Dark has any so sense of nervousness here at all. And again, he is as competitive as they get, though, right? As competitive as they get. Which is, you know, one of the fun things, I would say, for, for StarCraft 2 players. They always, a lot of them very, very passionate, very, very uh, competitive. Over I suppose that is for a lot of competitive gamers overall. Even the ones that aren't pro, to be fair. <laughs> but still, not a lot of them put in as much time, as much effort as, uh, as Dark. And the Dark Horse, I suppose, for within the Protoss here, is going to have to show... Uh, he has what it takes to bring us this behemoth. Some music sound really uh, up for anyone else. I don't know. Hmm. You gotta let me know if that's the case, guys. I don't. It shouldn't be, at least. Shouldn't be the case. So far, we're looking good. So far, we're looking good. Another thing to, uh, uh, that's worth noting is that we did just see a big uh, match, a best of nine between DRG and Cure as well. I only got to catch the tail end of it, but my dear lord. It was quite something else. <laughs> it really was. It was on the, um, the Alpha X channel on Freaky TV. Oh man, it went all the way to game number nine. And uh, it was crazy, right? I mean, because so far, at the moment in time, I thought Cure is unbeatable in uh, in TVC. At least that, that was my opinion of it. Apparently, he isn't anymore. And the games that I saw as well, he didn't quite go into that very heavy Widowmind drill play. But I only saw two games. I would be very, very um, surprised if he hasn't done that at all at a single point in time. Seeing how well it works, it's not a secret strategy or anything like that anymore either, right? So, maybe that means uh, DRG kind of found a way around that type of uh, strategy. Or maybe those were the games that uh, Cure actually managed to take off of uh, DRG. Maybe Cure's just trying to find new things, right? That could be the case as well. But still, a little bit of a surprise there for me, seeing DRG uh, being able to do so well against Cure. 
Overlord's coming in for the scout, sees that there is, well, I suppose a robo on the way, right? That's the robo, exactly, so. Sees the, uh, the forge and the twilight council also, not a lot left as a surprise here for Dark. Oh, that's a nice status trap. Some value being found there. Let's see how much influence that has overall. It's not too much, not too much, but it's still definitely a bit of a dent in that economy game. The Starcraft morning is a good morning, that's right. Take our heads out of the other game that is being played right now, all over the stage. A couple of uh, sirens going off over here, hope that's people doing okay. Another attempt at a status trap here. There's only a single Zirkling. Dark, uh, dark on the point in this department here after getting caught off there for, well, at least one of them. Trying his hand at some roach and then Hydra play. So it could just be making a couple of roaches here in case there is somewhat of a... No, actually, this is a full on roach attack. It's starting to feel like that's a lot of roaches on the production. Not feeling safe here. Maybe he is anticipating somewhat of a move out fairly soon. Which is what you would expect from a Protoss at this moment in time, right? But Nice has been playing super carefully. He's been... He's just been... Just massing up. He's bulking up. He's unlocking most of his tech trees. He's getting the Robo Base. Getting the, uh, the Templar Archives. He's making another base. That's all he's doing. He's just gaining more traction in the macro department he hasn't really been across the field at all except for with a uh, with a void ray and a oracle and that's about it circling here getting a good scout of see that there is that fourth base starting to be uh, starting to be created so that is nice to see not cool advertising in the muslims channel is this like some weird meta where you're trying to advertise the Muslims channel in our channel? By saying that we're advertising in the Muslim channel? That's weird. The Muslim is this great guy overall. We would never we would never do something like that, honestly. And if there is somebody doing that, it's a it's a rogue agent. It's somebody that is just doing it on his own. Like, we have no real anything to gain for from doing something like that. That would be uh, rather ridiculous. Roaches are kind of poopy in this matter. Oh yeah, yeah, I do agree with that. I mean, they're a nice in-betweener, right? They're like, uh, they're like, if you're making a sandwich, they're the underlayer of sandwich. You still need to get something else on top of that to really uh, help it out. Be its own to get to the real meat of things, but you know, for situations like these, he's coming in from multiple angles here, trying to gain some traction. He's doing all right for himself. There's not that many gateway forces here for Nice. Somebody that's been quite aggressive here, not quite finding a lot of uh, units to show for the amount of money that he's been uh, managing to get into his bank right now. I mean, he does have like a thousand minerals and, uh, seven, well, almost 700 uh, gas in the bank as well. If that was all in, in mortals or uh, gateway forces, this probably wouldn't have done much, but it's not the case right here. Looks like Nice was trying to get more traction in the overall tech tree before really amassing a big frontal force of uh, units. So, you know what? The Roaches actually did manage to do quite a bit there. Managed to get that fourth base uh, killed off. Not even the Knight, right? It was already established. That's a straight up kill. As Dark is just continuing to make his own bases behind this as well. He's getting a Hive tack on the way. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a fifth base also coming in here. Maybe he's just gonna plan to be a little bit careful here. Get to 200 supply first and foremost. And then later on, go into something else entirely. Um, which would be those extra bases here. Okay, already has a drone available. There is a war prism here as well. Not sure if they are aware of each other's existence. And a dropper lord's play from Dark. Ooh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool to see. 
I'm really liking this. There is not a lot of uh, overall scouting here for nice in the um, dead space area. It makes sense to not have it as much in a PvZ, since, you know, they don't have Medivacs. You don't usually see a Doom Drop from a Zerg with five Overlords coming in here. Status Trap does get denied as Dark is taking away all the attention from Nice to this one single location right here. That looks like a scary force overall, so Nice is actually sending everything across the Overlords. They showed themselves a little bit early, probably could have gone a little bit further towards the right side, but still finding a lot of damage here, and Nice, yeah, instantly just taps on out of there. Pretty cool, pretty cool, you know what, having uh, having the Overlord Doom Drops right there, coming in, and nice, he, he realized, well, this is dark after all, am I really gonna make a comeback happen here after I lose my base, after I'm taking a lot of uh, economic damage as well, my, what was it, the third base, and I'm losing most of my very, very uh, expensive tech structures, or well, some of them, right, the High Templar archives and such, uh, pretty darn um, impressive, dark, I mean, he was getting a hive tech behind that as well, and he was just just in a marvelous position, right? He had the means to make a transition happen while he didn't even have to. He was already gaining so much traction across the map with that aggression play, and it was all he needed. Very cool, very cool. Uh, it feels like Nice was a bit flustered, sitting with a thousand minerals while Dark has roaches. Yeah, it, it did seem a little bit off, wasn't it? Uh, it, it? Maybe he was waiting to see what kind of units he wanted to make against Dark, what kind of army composition Dark was going for, and then invest everything into whatever counters that. But, he, yeah, he was just woefully underprepared for the roach attack that did come in, with a couple of Hydras there as well, so... Even if he had made, like, a couple extra Void Rays or something like that, which is one of the biggest ways to deal with these Roach attacks, that is, um... That, that wouldn't have been able to even haul that off, so... Very, very cool, clean build from Dark, showcasing why he is such a, such a behemoth of the Zerg race. Will he be able to do it again here on Light Shade and just take a clean 2-0? Who knows? A second Robo would have been nice. Yeah, I think so as well. I'm... I'm still a bit perplexed why he did try to get himself into Storm as well. Maybe he was trying to prepare for a Stargate High Templar transition. Or just get the, you know, the Storms, the Disruptors, everything together. Trying to make a play like that, but... but yeah, it, it did seem like he was uh, trying to skimp out on a couple of the, you know... The bread, the underlying bread of a composition before going into the tech tree, right? It's a very delicate balance for the Protoss to walk. If you do manage to get away with a big jump in tech and get yourself that very expensive um, high-value army, then that is going to be a big benefit, but wasn't quite able to do so and uh, got caught with his pants down, with his hands in the cookie jar. With his hands in the in the tech tree jar, I suppose. Anyway, it's the blue Protoss right here from Alphax. The Taiwanese player. He is nice. Nice. His opponent, one game up for him. He's the Red Zerg player. Fighting for the Dragon and the Phoenix. And all the game is around. He is Dark. Man, I just... I, I still can't quite get over the fact that... We're getting to see so much more dark in these online cups. It is such a joy for me, honestly. Um, there's just a couple of players, right? Like, that I get to see a lot of. Cure, innovation. Um, I, I suppose trap a little bit as well. But, yeah, there's there's a lot of these pro top-notch green players. And don't get me wrong, I love seeing them play. They are fantastic at what they do. But then there's always these... These pro players that kind of allure you when you're just mostly casting the online cups, right? Such as Dark, Maru, Serral. Um, you know, these top tier players that can afford not to partake in, a, in as many online cups and just focus on those really big tournaments, that keep prepping for them, keep their strategies hidden and stuff like this. Overall, though, we're having the ability now to... Potentially keep Dark around a little bit more, so get him hopefully in more tournaments. 
It's going to just add to the overall roster of enjoyments that we get to see on Alpha X here, and that is fan bloody tastic. Um, we are here for Bjorn. Bjorn, yeah, Bjorn also actually quite often. I mean, when he came back, he doesn't seem to mind joining these online cups either, right? It makes a lot of sense. He hasn't really had any big tournament wins since he came back, to be fair. He's only been back for a very short time, relatively speaking. So, makes sense that he is still partaking in a lot of these online happenings. Same goes for DRG, right? He also was in a little bit of a similar situation. And he has been proving himself quite a bit here. But, yeah, it's going to be rough. I'm I'm also a big uh, fan for Bjorn. Really would like to see him move on through, but is he going to be able to do it here? It's uh, quite a nasty situation. It's a difficult one, as we have, of course. I mean, not just Dark and DRG, but Nice here as well. We saw DRG taking out Cure, somebody that I always praise for his TVZ. Could be, could be a difficult one. Oh my god, that adept. <laughs> adept. Electric boogaloo right there. Uh, trading for work software workers does kind of mean, well, overall that uh, equalizes out a little bit here. Not as much. I would think the Zerg still benefits a bit more as they have the, the better means of production for workers here. Can stockpile a bit more. Dark just needs to be careful not to overproduce those workers. And that is something we've never really seen from Dark, right? That is one of his main strengths, not over-droning. Playing it safe, playing it cool, because he's able to play from behind as well. There, Certain Zergs, you know, they find themselves in an unwinnable position because they don't have as much um, experience with playing behind or just, just they don't have the insight, the knowledge that you require to fight back from a bad place, a, uh, a negative position, but anyway, what's this? Keep them ADs away from my Misushi. <laughs> thanks for the sub, uh, thanks for the sub, sub. I'm gonna try again, uh, Demonum, 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 oh dear lord, I'm horrible at names, my apologies. Double Futa also following, thanks for all the follows by the way guys, that is much appreciated as well. Hope you are enjoying the overall StarCraft that we can bring to you. And on the Alpha X channel, we've uh, we've been managing to grow a little bit here and there, right? And it is uh, it's amazing to see. We've been going at it for a while now, but you know, overall, seeing everybody kind of coming in as well here, that's very much appreciated. Love you all. Thank you so much. Damon, bro. <laughs> uh... Daemoni, um, camo. Feel free to make a nickname. All right. Ah, uh, please never stop again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say it again. Dear Lord. All right. Well, some adapts here. Still doing some some more damage right here. Ooh, Phoenix coming out of the other uh, the other end. Overlord there as well. Is that an overseer? That's take a look after the adepts are cleaned up yeah overlord coming into this base right here so this is one of the moments where dark he needs to start proving to us again that he knows how to play from a bad position he's lost 16 workers in total he hasn't been able to do that much in retaliation And there's a good amount of links right here waiting for, well, trying to partake in a bit of damage, but not sure if there's going to be a whole lot. Actually, it doesn't do manage to clean up that building right there. I'm not quite sure what that was. Was that a toilet? No, it wasn't. What was he building there? A robo? It was a robo. Okay, interesting. Not a place where I was expecting a robo. I thought that would be just a regular gateway. Nice catch there by Dark, though, seeing that that was a robo and just jumping straight on top of it with those links. I mean, if that was a gateway, he probably wouldn't have done that. So, you know, doing his due diligence, checking all those buildings that are being created. A couple of probes do get taken out, though, right? The, this just continuous circling harassment. Very impressive by Doc. And this is what I mean, right? He was in a bad spot, but all of a sudden, you know, he's making these small moves, these minor adjustments. And it is bringing him in a very 
reasonable place again, right? He's not still not out of the woods just quite yet. Still needs to make a couple more maneuvers like that, similarly. But he's doing it, right? This is the start of something like that. Oh, look at that. The Zerklings distracting on the left and the Bailings coming in on the right. That's a lot of damage. That's 14 probes just like that. These Zerklings don't even need to commit here anymore. They can just move away. They have done their job. Still more Bailings there as well. 15 probes just like that. Dark. I mean, I, I'm always uh, surprised when he does it. But just like that, he did manage to do it once again. Bringing himself even further uh, in this matchup. One, I, I would say right now in the lead. So the ball back in the park of Nice. The Nice Park needs to figure out how he's going to be able to fight from a disadvantageous position. He's going to have to figure out how he will try to make something go into his favor. He's got a lot of sentries. And he's mostly fighting against Zerklings, although Ravages are being created right now as well. So the sentries are going to uh, drop in their value quite significantly here rather quickly as well. And we don't have any Immortals with this attack either. Remember that. That is a, a big deal. Usually with a lot of sentry armies, you want to have those Immortals. Oh, that's a good status trap, but still, yeah, there's just no DPS here for this army of Nice. It is... Absolutely nothing quite being able to take out the Zerg units. Yeah, it's nice. It's putting up a good fight. Those force fields, absolutely amazing. Really solid stuff. But again, nothing here to kill the units of Dark and Dark. Going to be able to snipe down that War Prism as well. That should be a GG is called.